The Palestinian militant group Hamas says its political leader Ismail Haniya has been assassinated in Iran. Haniya was in Tehran to attend the swearing-in of the country's new president. He's been key to negotiations for a ceasefire in Gaza. Iran says he was killed by Israel. Our Middle East correspondent Eric Torchek joins us now. Eric, just how significant is this death? Jeremy, Ismail Haniyeh was the face of Hamas. He was its key political leader. He was central to its relationships around the region with important players like Turkey, Iran, Qatar and Egypt. And he was also key to the relationships with the other Palestinian political factions, which considered him a pragmatist and, for Hamas, a relative moderate. They've all condemned his death. Uh, where the real impact could be felt is in the ceasefire negotiations. Ismail Haniyeh was one of the leaders of the Hamas negotiating team. Team. His killing will definitely complicate that process. There were reports that Israel and Hamas uh, were getting closer to a deal, but it's hard now to see how they'll end the fighting in Gaza with his death. And what might this mean for the region in terms of the Iranian response now? Uh, Iran's president has condemned the strike. He said he views it as a serious breach of Iran's territorial integrity. It is also undoubtedly a major affront to Iran's pride. Just hours before he was killed, this man was shaking hands with the new president. He was staying in a house for military veterans in the capital. He was under Iran's protection. Uh, but Iran may find it has very limited options to respond. Uh, we saw the limits of its power in April when it sent 300 missiles and drones towards Israel in retaliation for the killing of uh, senior military figures in the Syrian capital, Damascus. All of those were shot down by a coalition of nations, which included the United States, the UK and France, not to mention Israel's own considerable air defence network. Uh, Israel itself hasn't, comment, hasn't confirmed that it killed Ismail Haniyeh. Earlier in the evening, it did confirm it targeted a senior Hezbollah military commander. That's the Lebanese militant group, which is primarily backed by Iran. Uh, he was killed in the southern suburbs of Beirut, and that was already raising fears it could trigger a broader regional war. Destruction in the heart of the Lebanese capital, the southern Beirut suburb and stronghold of the Iran-backed Hezbollah littered with debris. We heard the sound of the explosion. There were two hits, one after the other. Israel's military says it targeted and killed this man, Fuad Shukr, Hezbollah's most senior commander who was allegedly behind the weekend attack in the Golan Heights. Fuad Shukr was the commander responsible for the Majd al-Shams massacre in which 12 children were murdered. He was a senior terrorist who has the blood of the Israelis and many others on his hands. At least three civilians were reportedly killed and dozens wounded, prompting widespread condemnation by Lebanese officials and Hezbollah's regional allies. I think it's a limited response as far as the Israelis think and are concerned, but whether it's going to be seen as a limited response by Hezbollah is yet to be seen. The US says all-out war can still be avoided and is continuing to push for diplomatic solutions. But with the killing of one of Hezbollah's leading military figures and now the assassination of the Hamas leader in Iran, it's hard to imagine Israel's enemies won't respond. Eric Tvorcek, ABC News.